Now let us see what are the important agencies of secondary data. See when I am talking about secondary data, the most important agency of secondary data is your census of India. I have been giving you examples throughout in this chapter. So now remember census of India is the most complete and continuous demographic record of the population. Conduct it every 10 years. You keep on getting the information about how the demographics is about India, how they have changed over the years. So census remember has been conducted regularly since 1881. So since 1881 we have been collecting this data on the basis of 10 years. So every 10 years we collect the data. Now remember after independence however we collected the first data in 1951 and the latest which we have collected is 2011. So the next census would be happening in 2021. Okay. What exactly does the government of India collect? the size, density, sex ratio, what is the literacy rate, how much migration has happened from one state to another, what is the rural urban distribution, what is the income. So there are many factors on which the data gets collected and hence this is the most important source for secondary data. Okay, So most important agency as such. Then comes your national sample survey organization known as NSSO. Okay, now this was established in way back in the year 1950 under the Ministry of Finance. So it is Ministry of Finance who regulates this particular organization or agency. It conducts survey and the data on estimates regarding literacy rate in the country, school enrollments, utilization of educational facilities, services, okay, employment, child care. So this is the kind of data this agency collects. Now the reports remember are published in a quarterly journal and this journal is known as Sarvekshana. So you can actually go and search about it and understand what kind of data do they present. Now we understood the important agencies. Let us understand more on the census and the sample survey. Now let's see the census survey. When I'm talking about census survey, it would be done on the entire population. So hence it is also known as a method of complete enumeration. For example, we discussed on the census of India, so that would be the best example of census survey wherein we visit each house and collect the data on first hand basis. Okay? What are the advantages of using such kind of method? See, it is accurate, reliable and absolute. So the results which we obtain from such data collection is that we get accurate, reliable results. There are less chances of bias because we just need to get the answers of the question. The entire population is getting covered and hence the personal biasness also cannot creep in. Okay. What are the disadvantages? A lot of time gets consumed in collecting data from each household and a lot of energy is required for that. It is only suitable in specific cases. So here why? Indian government goes for census because obviously we want to collect the data for the entire population. So here this method is suitable but then it would not be suitable in some other methods or in some other scenarios. For example, I just want to know the average preference of people in terms of car. Would they prefer a car, let's say a mouse? sedan car or would they prefer some other kind of car. So in that I can just rely on sample collection right or on sampling. Now remember large amount of enumerators are required to be trained when you are collecting or doing census survey okay. Now let's understand now about sample survey. See here the population would get surveyed but only a sample population. So for example if I want to find out how many people like chocolate ice cream. So then I would just rather than going and asking the entire population, the best way would be to collect a sample and then based on the data collected from that sample, make a conclusion. So here what we do, we select a sample and then collect the data. Okay. What are the advantages out here? It is very economical. It is not time consuming. The administration convenience is there. So it's like, you know, you are not covering a very large geographical area and hence that would cause a problem in terms of administrative management. So that problem is erased out here. Less efforts are required compared to the entire population getting surveyed. Okay. 
what are the disadvantages you are doing partial investigation okay so if you are doing a partial investigation chances are that you selected a sample which is not representing the entire population if that happens then your survey would the results of your survey would be incorrect okay so remember again the problem happens if the population is very diverse let's say the preferences of population are quite diverse in that scenario to make a sample is very difficult okay sampling would involve a set of technical procedures which make the sampling a complex and a difficult procedure so the another disadvantage is when we are doing this sampling we are following a technique okay we are following certain technical procedures because of that this entire exercise becomes very difficult and it becomes very complex and hence only very experienced statisticians can do this kind of survey now let's understand the methods of sampling quickly we have the first method which is random sampling what is that randomly i will just collect the data from the population so whatever population i'm choosing as my sample would be on a random basis let's say i want to find out for a city let's say for example mumbai i want to find out what is the preference of people in mumbai about a sedan car okay or would they prefer a sedan car or they want a luxury car okay so here i would just go and randomly select from the population and that would constitute my sample so here what happens every person in the population would have a equal chance of getting selected okay now the best example to remember for random sampling is exit polls you would have seen exit polls getting published whenever there are po there is polls in election polls in the country so when they are conducting this exit polls they select the sample on a random basis okay what are the different methods under which the sample is collected in random sampling one is lottery method so let's say the entire population is the number is 10 now from 10 i want to collect three people okay i want to go in and check only for three people so my sample size is 3 so under lottery method i'll just pick you know out of those 10 pick three of them so that's a lottery method then comes the table of random numbers so wherein there would be a random number being assigned and then i would based on that collect the information or maybe collect the sample for my surveys now then comes your non randoming non random sampling what is that the units of the population selected would be at the convenience and the judgment of the investigator so it would be the investigator who would decide on what population would be selected okay so the different methods here are deliberate sampling quota sampling and convenience sampling 